this coming Sunday, the 5th of July, churches up and down the country will be opening their doors, many for the first time in months, to welcome worshippers once again. The church has not slept or been idle during this time. We have just found new ways to worship and pray, to fellowship and to serve. But much of what we do has been limited because we simply couldn't meet. All that will now change, though still with many restrictions. And there's a sense of anticipation in the air. At Dundrum Methodist Church, we'll be treading this path again, and we are hoping to meet outdoors, but if the weather's not good, we're ready to meet inside. Over the last couple of weeks, preparations have gathered pace, and we have been installing new signs and sanitizers, one-way systems and special seating arrangements. It's been quite a journey. Today's Psalm 125 is all about a journey a special kind of journey, a pilgrimage to worship at the house of the Lord. This is one of a series of 15 psalms called Songs of Ascent. These psalms were recited or sung by pilgrims as they traveled from their homes up to the capital city and the spiritual home in Jerusalem, poetically called Mount Zion. Listen to the words of Psalm 125 from the Living New Translation. It's called a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. Those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forever. The wicked will not rule the land of the godly, for then the godly might be tempted to do wrong. O Lord, do good to those who are good, whose hearts are in tune with you. But banish those who turn to crooked ways, O Lord. Take them away with those who do evil. May Israel have peace. For many of these people, they would not have been regular visitors to Jerusalem. They may have lived many miles away, and public transport wasn't what it is today. The journey was a major undertaking, a significant cost, and would have taken a lot of planning. For most, it was a walk of days or weeks, perhaps even months. The prize was to enter the temple or the tabernacle to meet with others, to worship God and to make their sacrifice. And the journey was really important as part of that experience. The songs they sang, the conversations they had, the struggles they encountered, these were all essential preparation for their final act of worship. These were the experiences that helped to shape them. As they traveled, they could reflect on their need for repentance for things they had done wrong or neglected to do, their need for humility to change, their need to trust in God, who was the inspiration for their journey. It's not as if they didn't have opportunity to worship in their hometown. They had shrines, they had meeting places that later would be called synagogues. But pilgrimage was important to them. And this is one of the songs that they sang on their journey. In the psalm, the physical grandeur and the security of the mountains surrounding Jerusalem were a metaphor for God's strength in protecting them as a people. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, said the psalmist, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forever. They appealed to God that the wicked would not prosper nor rule the land, that God would bless those who do what is right and whose hearts are in tune with him. Their final appeal is that their nation would have peace, God's shalom. After 125 days of the COVID crisis in this country, it seems rather fitting that we are following these songs of ascent, just as we are beginning to emerge from lockdown and preparing to meet again in the Lord's house for worship. The journey is not over. We know there is still a long way to go, but these songs can encourage us. The lockdown has given us pause for thought and reflection, time to allow us to reassess our values, the way we work, our family relationships, our friendships, how we use our money and our time. As with the pilgrims of old, we have had and, and still have the opportunity to repent for the things that we have done wrong or neglected to do, 
to grow in humility, to change our ways, to deepen or perhaps discover for the first time trust in God and in his Son, Jesus Christ, who is the inspiration for our journey. Jesus said to us, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Jesus calls us all to follow him. And when we are unsure of the way ahead, he simply says to us that he is the way and the truth and the life. Finally, as we enter this new phase, as we begin to open up our economy and social life and our travel, let us, like the psalmist, pray for the peace of our nation and for the peace of our troubled world. And pray also for an end to this COVID-19 pandemic that has caused so much pain and disruption. May God bless you and to him be the praise and the glory. Amen.